Hey guys, welcome to video. My name's Hugh and I'm from Home Network Solutions. And today I'm going to show you how to install a Ubiquiti Unify U6 in wall. Um, and the way I'm going to be doing it is I'm going to be doing this as a kind of retrofit. So we're basically going to take a little RJ45 socket like that and we're going to replace it with one of these. It's really simple to do and it's exactly what these access points are designed for. Okay, so before we do that, I'm just gonna quickly talk about this access point and some of the specs, and then we'll get onto that. There are chapters in this video, so if you wanna skip ahead, then please do. Here we have the U6 in wall. It's not the cheapest access point. Certainly you can get some ceiling mounted ones for a bit cheaper, but it is. Uh, it has got quite a lot of features, so you'll see why it's a little bit more in a moment. So I'm gonna just miss this out, and we'll just go straight down to the bottom here, because I can kind of show you how it installs. So effectively, if you imagine that used to be an RJ45 socket, you can take that off, stick it ahead, head on the cable, and then put this device onto the wall, so it looks like this and then that will give you Wi-Fi. But the other great thing about it, and we'll see it in this little video here, the cable goes into the back of the unit, but then you've got four ports on the bottom to enable you to keep using those hardwired connections. So effectively your one hardwired cable becomes a Wi-Fi point and four connections. Additionally, if you use a PoE Plus power source, so a PoE switch, uh, for example, then uh, you can also use the first port for PoE pass-through. Very useful for things like VoIP phones, etc. So that is the device. You'll get a better idea of this when I do the installation, but let's go down to the technical specs. So yeah, PoE or PoE Plus, depending on whether or not you want to use that PoE pass-through port. Um, it uses 13 watts. If you are adding a PoE device to that, then obviously you've got to add whatever draw that device is going to give. Um, and it's pretty capable from Wi-Fi perspective. So it's two, uh, 2.4 is two times two, um, but it's five gigahertz is four times four. So there's quite a lot of radios on that. Um, and you are able to get a lot of clients connected to it. I would say generally speaking, people view this as a kind of single room solution. And that's mainly because of its placement. It's normally gonna be a bit lower like this, um, as you can see in these photos here. And that's just because it's a kind of retrofit solution. Um, so a ceiling mounted access point's a bit higher, so it's it's uh, it's got better coverage for that reason. But actually, I do really like these devices. Sometimes we will just use these devices within a home and they give really good coverage, so I definitely recommend them. They can sit behind things like televisions as well. Televisions don't really take any um, any power out of the uh, out of the Wi-Fi, you'll still get really good coverage. And then obviously if you have got them behind the television, you can use those ports at the bottom to plug the television in and any other devices that need a hardwired connection on that telly. So they are, they are pretty good in that sense as well. Okay, so one thing I'm just gonna do is just have a look at some other in-wall access points from Unify. So we've got the new U7 Pro. So you might be wondering why am I talking about the U6 Pro when the U7 is out? Well, I will be talking about this in the video very shortly, but there is a bit of a difference here. Obviously, we've got Wi-Fi 7 uh, Wi-Fi on this one, so that's hence the name, but it doesn't have any um, hardwired ports on the bottom of this one. So it's just it's just Wi-Fi. It doesn't, it doesn't have any of those hardwired ports. So in some senses, it might not be ideal for everyone. There is also the U6 Enterprise that is actually 6E. Um, and that does have hardwired ports on the bottom, but it's quite a bit more expensive. So that's not gonna be for everyone. And it's not really necessary for home use, but maybe if you wanna get the highest throughput, then you might consider that device. If you're planning on doing this yourself, then you do need a few tools. You need a screwdriver, some RJ45 uh, crimps, some RJ45 heads, and probably a set of snips as well. You don't need to spend a fortune in that, and I'll put some Amazon affiliate links in the comments below. I would strongly recommend using pass-through heads as they're much simpler than the old type. Right, so here's my RJ45 socket, and this cable goes back to my PoE switch. I'm gonna take this off and put on the in-wall access point. Obviously, your socket might look slightly different depending on which country you're in. I'm just gonna unscrew it, and then put the screws in the box, and then I'll just pop the module out so I can get to it. And I'm gonna snip the zip tie. Then I'm basically gonna use a special punch down tool just to pull those cables out. I want to pull them out individually, but you can just use a screwdriver. You don't have to use this uh, punch down tool, but that gets the cable out. And now we're ready to sort it into its pairs. So I'll put the pair order in the comments below, but basically just get them in the right order, flatten them out, and then we're gonna snip the ends to get the head on. We need to get that cut nice and straight. So let's do that now. And then the RJ45 head should just slide on nice and easily. 
So once we've got it on, check the pairs are in the right order. And then we need to get our crimpers. And these are pass through crimps I've got here. Put it through and then we can crimp it on and it should be good to go. So that's our head ready to go in the box. Now we're going to put a faceplate on. It's just a matter of screwing this on. So we just get the screws that we just took out of the box and we're going to put them back in and just screw those in nice and quickly. So once it's secured in place, we are pretty good to go. We're just going to get that in wall access point and we're going to put the cable into the back here. So we'll just slot that in there. And then you fit it from the bottom, just push it to the top. You might just have to give it a tap just to get it to click into place like I do here. And you can see that the light has already come on on the access point and it is going to be ready for adoption in a moment. Okay, so now I've installed it, I've adopted it onto the controller. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some of the settings I'm gonna tweak just to try and get the best out of Wi-Fi. And then uh, we're gonna do some speed tests. I've got 900 up, 900 down connection here. So we should see some pretty blazing fast Wi-Fi. If you're looking to know how to set this up, I would recommend using a controller. Um, but if you're not using a controller, then you can do it in standalone mode, just using the Unify app, but it's not the best way to do it. I wouldn't re necessarily recommend that. Um, I'm not gonna show you how to do that in this video, but I do have another video on how to do that. And I will put a link in the corner now. Okay, so I'm in my controller and I'm just gonna quickly create a uh, specific Wi-Fi just for that access point, just so we know that we're connecting to it. It's not gonna try and connect to another access point because I've got quite a bit of Unify stuff here. Um, so I'm just going to manual. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn off 2.4. We'll just make this a five gigahertz only just to get those top speeds off this device. Uh, and that is about it. I'm just gonna leave that at the moment. And then we're gonna make some changes on the actual access point itself. Okay, so uh, here's the device here. So I'm just gonna select that and I'm gonna to go to settings and in the radio management on channel width, I'm just gonna go and put this in 80. 80 is normally the one that you get the best speeds from. Um, sometimes you've got a lot of interference, then 80 won't be so good and you wanna stick with the default 40, but most of the time you get a better speed out of 80. So I'm just gonna do that and then we'll apply those settings and then we can go and do the speed test. Okay, so I did three speed tests. This is, uh, they're all pretty much the same. 710 on the download and 574 on the upload. So slightly slower, but still very impressive. Okay, so we've installed it, we've done the speed test, and you can see how simple that was. We just changed it from a RJ45 connection straight into the Wi-Fi access point, and we've got those really great speeds. I do hope you enjoyed the video. Please do subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you again next time. Thanks very much.